Welcome to St. John. This gorgeous island in the US Virgin Islands has some of the best beaches in the Caribbean. And most of it is a national park, so you don't have to travel far to see wildlife. The only way to get to St. John is by boat. So today we're hopping on a ferry from St. Thomas to explore both ends of the island in search of views, the best snorkeling spots, and food. All right, we're about to catch the ferry to St. John this morning. It's recommended that you get here at least 45 minutes before. I wish we had even gotten here sooner because there are a lot of cars here. I read online the car barge only fits about 24 cars. We went to the ferry port in Red Hook. When you come in, you pay a $4 cash fee and then you'll pay your fare once you are on the ferry. You can book in advance, you don't have to, but it's about $50 round trip. There is also a passenger ferry that you can take if you don't have a car. One-way tickets cost $6 from Red Hook and $12 from Charlotte Amelie. But the car ferry is nice because it allows you to see the entire island in a day without much hassle, and it has upper decks to take in the view. We're getting close to St. John, and if you look real hard, you can see Cruise Bay right over there. Since we arrived at St. John early in the morning, we took a quick drive over to Mongoose Junction. Cruise Bay is the main city on the island and your first stop off the ferry. Since it's early, we're gonna grab some breakfast before we start exploring. For breakfast, we headed to Sundog Cafe. Here I got the stuffed French toast with cream cheese, mango, honey butter, and fresh fruit. Can't say it was my favorite. It was a little soggy and heavy on the cream cheese for my liking. And I got the Eggs Benedict. I want egg. Our bill here came out to $47. After breakfast, it was time to explore, working our way from Cruise Bay all the way down to Coral Bay. And our first stop was a beach that was rated as one of the best in the Virgin Islands, and I think Sarah believes the hype. So we are at our first beach on St. John. This is Trunks Bay, and this is beautiful. I think this is what I imagined when I was thinking of beaches in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Almost all of this is national park land, so there is an entry fee to get in. It was $5 per person. Your parks passes do not work here, um, but it is well worth the visit. Just look how gorgeous this water looks. Trunk Bay is a nice place to snorkel, but if you want to see sea turtles, then you're going to love where we're headed next. Also, I notice a lot more Jeep rentals on this island, and I mean a lot more. Almost everyone has a Jeep. I'll mention parking a few times throughout this video, but it's pretty limited, especially in the national park. Like I said earlier, Maho Bay is your best bet to see sea turtles, but there are some rules. You can rent your snorkel gear right off the beach. They also do have paddle boards and kayaks for rentals as well. There are seven species of sea turtles worldwide, and four of them can be found in the USVI. Green, hawksbill, leatherback, and the occasional loggerhead. I do have to ask people, please do not touch the sea turtles. Um, it is a fine and it does stress our turtles out. It gives them tumors that you'll see. Okay. The new thing is riding. Please do not ride our what? turtles. Oh yes, I have to say it. I know, <laughs> I know. I was shocked when I, I found this out myself. Oh my God. It's like, what? <laughs> we spent a good chunk of our time at Maho Bay and at first the sea turtles were nowhere to be found, but then several showed up at the same time. Trunk Bay, even though we didn't get in the water. It was like beautiful. 
It's like a very curving beach line. And you can see the islands in the back and like the greenery. The water was really blue, it was really warm. Pink Trunk Bay, so far. What do you think about Maho Bay? I like Maho Bay. I was expecting almost like a cookie point, like kind of overcrowded and like a cash grab and just loud, but that's not that at all. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> if you, mm, wow, my hair looks crazy right now. Sorry about that. But if you want to get to Maho Beach or really any of these beaches, the parking lot fills up quick. So you want to get here early, like really early, because I don't know if you can see this parking lot, but it's completely full. Maho Beach is kind of awesome. I mean, it took a little bit of patience, but we saw at least five or six sea turtles. What you think of the beach? I was like a little disappointed that we chose to snorkel here instead of Trunks Bay, because I thought Trunks Bay would be a lot, it was a lot more beautiful. But I'm really glad we snorkeled here because, you know, yeah. I'm really glad we snorkeled here because we saw big sea turtles, like a lot of sea turtles, so that was cool. But yeah, I like this spot. Next up in our detour is a trip to Ram's Head, the southernmost point of the Virgin Islands National Park with gorgeous views over the ocean. To get there, you park at Salt Pond Bay, follow the trail signs past the beach, and from there, it's an easy to moderate hike. We just started the hike. It's about a little over a mile to get to Ram's Head, but there's also other places you can get to here like Salt Pond Bay, which I think where most of the people are going. There's a lot of cars here, but some of them had beach equipment, so I think they're all headed to the beach. Hopefully the hike isn't too crowded. To get to Ram's Head, you must first cross through the beach, so you can either cool off before or after your hike. So we're about halfway through the hike and that spot right there is where we're headed. to the top of Ram's Head. Sarah, what do you think of the hike? Felt a little longer than what I thought it would be. It's not a long hike by any means, but really beautiful the whole way. I think if you're a beginner hiker, this would be like a good adventurous mm -hmm. hike, but it's definitely not particularly challenging. One of my biggest rules when traveling is that you always need to stop for fresh coconuts. So that's exactly what we did, and it was the perfect way to quench our thirst after the hike. Right, Floridians. <laughs> Flor Floridian, right? right? How we go? Floridian? Floridian. Floridian. Floridian is the word. Floridian. I'm learning. I'm learning. Thank okay. you. Okay. So excited. Fix it. Uh oh. 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 All right, let's get some food. We stopped into Skinny Legs because aside from the good burgers, they have really good Pusher's Painkillers. Outside of the Virgin Islands, painkillers may not be that well known, so let me explain it a little bit. Four parts pineapple juice, one part orange juice, and one part cream of coconut. Then add as much rum as you like. The drink was invented at a bar called Soggy Dollar in the British Virgin Islands, and Pusher's was the original rum used for it. Here I got the blue cheeseburger with bacon, and Sarah just got the cheeseburger with bacon. This was by far the best place we ate in St. John, but in fairness, we didn't eat at a lot of places this time around. Our total here came out to $66. Skinny Legs also has a shop next door for t-shirts and souvenirs. Couple more tips for your time on the island. Make sure to check your ticket to see when the last ferry leaves, and plan on getting there plenty early. Also get comfortable driving in reverse because you'll have to back your car onto the ferry. If you want a peaceful getaway, there's just so much to love about St. John. It might just be our favorite, but we will have a comparison video coming soon where we break down what we love about both St. Thomas and St. John. 